Hello and welcome back. We apologize for the long break, but welcome back to MLG Orlando Open 2016. I am Fox, joined by Paradox, and we're getting into a long-awaited match of Optic Gaming versus Ground Zero. The former DT roster is here facing off against the best team in the world. And Paradox, what are you thinking about this matchup so far? Can you give people the maps and your predictions? So, we're starting things out with Stronghold Hardpoint. From there, we go on to Search and Destroy on Breach, Uplink on Evac, CTF on Fringe, and if we go all the way to Game 5, Hunted Search and Destroy will be the deciding map. So, looking at this, Optic Gaming coming off a very strong series against Kingsman. That one goes a lot further than people thought. It goes all the way to Game 5, Optic Gaming clutch up. Karma does some absolutely filthy things in that search and destroy as well, especially with the 1v3s. And now you do see we have a bracket to show you here. This is the winner's bracket, of course, over on Alpha. You see Team Envious going up against the boys on Rise Nation. You're here for Ground Zero versus Optic Gaming. FaZe Clan versus Team Elevate going on over on the side station. And just on the other side of the curtain from us, we have Luminosity Gaming going up against Team Infused. Yeah, so the winner of this match looks like they might have to face off against the winner between Envious and Rise Nation. So, pretty big match up here. It won't get any easier heading on to the end of this double elimination tournament. Really excited to see how things kick off. But, let's talk about these maps here. So, can you g give me a recap here again? I'm sorry, the first map is Stronghold Hardpoint. Second is what? Search and Destroy on Breach. Okay, so Stronghold Hardpoint, of course, one of Optic's stronger hardpoint maps. Overall, just a fantastic respawn team, and they're facing off against the team of, I'm sorry, I keep wanting to call them Dream Team, but it is Ground Zero. They're facing off against Ground Zero, who has a very strategic approach when it comes to the bands and yes. protects in these respawn game modes, and I think that that's something that could give them the edge, but we have to remember that Optic Gaming is no joke. These respawn game modes, they are the best in the world for a reason. It's because they have mastered the fundamentals of so many of these game modes and the map combinations. So looking at this Stronghold Hardpoint, you think first really 60 seconds are going to be spent around the middle of the map and then you need to focus make sure you're able to pick up the spawns over by statue so you can take control of the bottom mansion and then you talk about a money hill as we go all the way around through this map we really will have to keep our eyes open for that bunker hill it's so easy to pick up 30 40 sometimes we see it the rare full 60 seconds being able to pick up on that hill but all right guys here we are loaded straight into the game the bands and protects are underway and I expect to see gra Ground Zero, not Dream Team, I expect to see Ground ground Zero targeting some of the weapons that they targeted when they played against FaZe. You just kind of saw, you know, you could throw these guys off. They're some of the best with those weapons. And, you know, we, we might be able to get an edge on them if we throw them off and bring them down to our game. I think that Ground Zero could certainly benefit from doing something like that here in this matchup. But oh, right away, we're seeing it. The Protect on the Flashbang, Ban on Overclock. So Optic Gaming just wants this game, of course, to be just as straight up as possible because they have shown time exactly. and time again they are the best at playing just that. That's exactly what you see time and time again with we have two teams where you think one is really outclassed by the other when it comes to what they're able to do with just their weapons and ground zero this is a perfect play by them keeping the flashbang there you think they pair that with possibly active camo heat wave throughout this game you can go for some very effective pushes and killer gonna go for that target ban on skunk the kinetic armor he will not be able to use that in game number one yeah that certainly affects skunk the most he's a player that can make the most of a situation often without kinetic armor and then for those nearly impossible gunfights he will of course activate that so just kind nice. of decreasing how useful he might be although it's a very marginal amount anything will help so now more bands coming in that's going to be heatwave karma a huge fan of that ability and it's also just one of those things that can really give you those free kills optic gaming though banning both lethals something that i have seen killer do a few times on stronghold hardpoint in the beginning is toss smokes we could see a smoke band come in but i think that they're going to oh no they don't go over high caliber they actually go for hcxd smokes make it in as well we haven't seen killer use that since he was on like cloud nine on this map but it has happened several times before so high caliber making in this game we'll have to see if the players opt to put it on their weapons and that's what i wanted to point out here right you're trying to play the waiting game for that last ban or protect with ground zero going and taking out rapid fire either way optic sort of is like okay you want to really throw a wrench into the system you're going to try and play this last one by the book we're just going to let high cal go into the game you have such a strong ar in the hands of formal really not going to be a problem when we saw high cal i believe made it in to an optic gaming match earlier in the tournament against team caliber and you saw what they could do with it there right yeah and it was still just as dangerous even though it was, it was a very, very few players using the high yeah. caliber in the first place. It was still in it the game, and though. some people yeah. were using it, yes. On the opposites are uh, getting in the special extractor. We see the War Machine coming into the hands of Killa, and it's going to be alongside two other weapons, actually, the Purifier and the Tempest. So 
with a lot of those abilities being banned out, we are going to see a more weapon-heavy stronghold hardpoint. Active camo, of course, is going to make it through. So three weapons on both sides. The only real difference is the fact that we're using, we're seeing Batteries War Machine on the side of Ground Zero. And Optic Gaming is a team that has run that before. They like to, they like to run that on EVAC hardpoint. It's going to be Skump that uses it. So you think now the active camo player, Skump, Diabolic, will be able to play their life inside the hill, and then you can use it to go for a break as well, especially once again, we get over to Bunker on rocks as well, because you have so much space to work with in that situation. You're able to use that beautifully over on that. Formal's gonna have the Scythe, so that's another one to watch out in Bunker. The Scythe Purifier combo, one of the strongest in the game when you look at Stronghold Hardpoint, some of the map, some of the hills that we have in the rotation for this game one. Yeah, and that and Formal is just so, so good with that Scythe. He's been using it throughout all of the nerfs. It's gotten throughout Black Ops 2, and he's still pushed it to its limit every single game. Very, very powerful player with that weapon in his hands. And I mean, how much easier can you make it for the guy? You know, he's the best AR in the game, and then you put a scythe in his hands, which is essentially a light machine gun, right? That's that's dangerous for sure. But uh, the rest of the players here expect to see the purifier come into play when we get over to that money hill, the, the hill in the bunker. Teams can rack up just so much time in that hard point and really just turn games around. The war machine could be also be useful there, holding off that cutoff, or maybe around the, uh, the the big the big wall, right, on the opposite side towards rocks. Mm -hmm. um, we could see it used in the middle near trenches, right, just spamming it around the corner if you get an idea as to where the spawns are coming from. But I think it would be the most useful in that money hill, even so though they have the purifier. Another specialist that has this sort of high impact potential, the Tempest. Carmen Sinner going to have control of that weapon, try and change the lightning as much as possible. Now, Cinder, I know, talk to him about it. He missed a couple of shots in Anaheim. He's looked good with it so far. So, expect him to not really miss shots here. And on the other side, you have Karma that's been lighting things up so far. Karma's been Orlando. a monster, man. The, his Shiva play this tournament has really it's impressed me. Typically, it's man. been Crim6 that what? runs it in respawn game modes, and I think he's great with it, especially in uplink. He uses it, uses it a lot on fringe uplink, but Karma's been taken over with in search and destroy as well, and he has been a huge threat with it. I'm really looking forward to seeing him do dirty things in this series with that with the Shiva. I'm surprised he even made it through the bands and protects, honestly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, game number one is now underway. The Green Wall found themselves in the championship winners bracket in their first test will be against the runners up from stage two finals in ground zero karma brings out the shiva once again looks like we have two shivas so far scout gonna rock the vmp of course crim6 owner of the Submachine gun as well on the other side. Looks like Chino will have high caliber on his Shiva kill. Sender has it on his M8. Sender also has the has high caliber on his M8 at the moment. Uh, Chino is a dangerous Shiva player for sure. He's used to using it, but I think that up against Formal and Karma, he's going to have a run for his money for sure. So, opening engagement going down. Karma and Formal able to find kills again. Karma just so dangerous with this weapon. He doesn't even need high caliber at the moment. He's already got two kills to his name. Spots oh a player on the flank, top research, and he's able to shut him down. The RK5 holding it down for him in those close range gunfights. You think? the delay does nothing to him at all. He went off in that last search and destroy against Kingsman, lighting things up so far on the three streak, just 100 away from already having some score streaks to work with. And it looks like on a standboard and see he, he does get these because these ground zero players are right there. Oh, Chino's gonna weird. be able to shut him down. That's three inside the hill for ground zero. Gonna try and work their way back. And you look at this first hill contest, time just goes back and forth between the two teams, but we really need to pay attention to those spawns and highlighting number seven for ground zero. That's Diabolic gonna be the nearest one. Coming up on the respawn, he's waiting for this out the gaming push over through bunker, but look at where they're fighting at. They're fighting all the way over in mansion already, trying to assert their will on the second hard point. Yeah, so here they are trying to go for these spawns. One player up on the, on the tables, but he's taken down by Crim6. So Crim6 is here being a nuisance, and that's just what he does best. The movement that he has and the survivability that he brings with it is what's going to disrupt these spawns and possibly get Chino off the head glitch. That's Skump with the three-piece in the hard point, finding them so much time, and now he's roaming around the hard point. So let's stay on board with Skump, because he has a couple of ground zero players. It's going to be the first one, almost picks up the second. That was going to be the next one to challenge, and Chino's holding down the hill. Karma will be inside with the M8, and I want to see. Pick that one up, able to connect with one. Skump going to clean up the other. And look at this, active camo already available to use by Skump. Karma's worked his way closer and closer towards that Tempest. Almost in hill three, and he's just getting so close. This is the second time he's been close to streaks this early. Skump's going to use the active camo. This is a beautiful play here because the rotations are in towards this half warrior. However, he will be spotted. Nice shot has a player just here around the corner. No problem taking out center. Rotation coming in. It looks like Killa is going to catch a player in the back. I think that might be Karma on mid-map. That he does. He shuts him down. Not able to see that coming at all. Three kills go in favor of Optic. Now that's four. Killa, the last man.
Man standing still. No, Killa was actually the last player to die. So he's going to spawn on towards back mansion. All the players flooding through bunker. Krim still looking towards middle because of the one player. Kinetic armor comes in. The, not kinetic armor comes into play. Excuse me. Uh, he's taken down by two different players behind him and one on mid map. So look at this. Ground Zero is going to start this push. Killa picks up one. That's his. He's three and nine now. I was going to say Killa's having a rough game so far. He's starting to bring the fire. Connect with one more. That's three in a row. Almost makes it four. But Optic Gaming put two in the hill. Crim6 will be able to pick up Cinder. Optic sitting pretty in the hill right now. There's going to be a lot of pressure, though. Put one formal in this back satellite area. All right. So Optic Gaming. Looks like they're going to have a little bit, they might have a little bit of trouble rotating over to this next hill. Formal's the only one here, but they don't know he's here. You could catch them off guard. If he gets that second kill, it's huge, but not able to do so. That's fine. The one kill relieves some of the pressure that Optic has to deal with as they rotate, and Formal comes off the spawn, but Killa responding with two kills is going to make that even more difficult. So let's see. Karma to the next one. He has the Tempest ready to go right about now as we move towards this Rock Hill, and they're going to put two inside the hill. Karma, no problem picking up the headshot on Killa. Tries to go for the second as a teammate here to work with as well. Die ball is going to try and make it hard for him, though, using the active camo. Karma, no problem spotting where Diabolic was, and now it's looking for one more. Can't keep it going, but the RK5 going to do absolute work. You can already hear the fans on the other side of this curtain going crazy. Karma's looking to keep lighting things up. The onslaught's coming in from the mansion, but Optic Gaming, the green wall, is holding it down on Rock's hardpoint. The Shiva still holding on this Rock Hut. Anyone that crosses through is going to have to walk through his laser beam, and the rotation as it comes in, only one Optic Gaming player there. Two kills go in favor of Ground Zero, and it looks like they're going to win the rotation. So let's see. Sinner is going to be the one in charge of this Tempest once again. Purifier and Sachino. The killer does have the War Machine to use an Optic. Going to send all these players around Statue. Killa has a really tough task ahead of him. Will not be able to stay alive. On board with Chino. Now looks like they're going to send one out. Diabolic ends up picking up two. That makes the three streak. 15 and 13 so far. Still looking for this Optic Gaming player on top of the truck. I believe that is Formos worked his way all the way around. Diabolic somehow trying to stay alive. Ooh. Will be able to connect. Picks up the kill. Ground Zero picking up even more time here. And now you think Killa pulls out the War Machine to stop the Optic Gaming push. The Purifier comes through. Takes him out. Chino responds with one of his own. Ground Zero doing a really good job showing why this is a money hill on Stronghold. Working their oh way my God. back into the game. All these kills going in favor of Ground Zero. You know, Optic Gaming is always so, has been so slow on so many of the rotations on the Bravo stream here and they usually succeed by just coming through and breaking it simply. But with three specialist weapons in the game and Chino being so incredible at holding these head glitches and power positions, he made it that much more difficult and all they come out with is scrap time. Wow, I try going board with Karma as he's set up for the second rotation. He gets completely taken out very fast. Now, Scup is in a high impact position right now and he's going to make it count. Picks up one on center, pushes out a mansion, no problem, picking up the second. That's Killa. Optic sends three into the hill. They just need to work here together. Scum shouldn't have a problem staying alive, but you hear the active camo. Was Pop Diabolic is going to make one count? That one. Picked up on Crim6, Ground Zero looking good going into the second rotation. Getting in the second rotation, we're seeing Ground Zero down 40 seconds. Sender still ha having a pretty decent game here, 19 and 7 at the moment on a two kill streak with the most amount of kill time on his team. Keep that in mind. Chino has also been great for the team so far despite his score being even. They're keeping up in the slang against Optic and that's important to note for this team. Kills are going down left and right in this. It was hard to keep up with some of the action. Skump though trying to pick up one down the highway will not be able to make it count, but you think this is a situation we saw once again at the beginning of this game. Out the game, we didn't necessarily have control of the spawns back here. It's where you see kill up position at right now, but they were able to force their way through the hill itself and pick up all the important time they oh, needed. to kill it. You got to no. connect with these shots, You brother. cannot miss that many bullets out of 30. I understand they're both midair, but that would have been huge for Killer to take him out, and now he's punished by Scumpy. Optic Gaming is swarming Mansion, but Sender is responding with two kills. Sender and Chino just bailed them out. Out. All right, that's three in a row for Senders trying to make it four. Optic Gaming looks like they're going to keep pushing through the middle of the map, and Chino makes him pay for it. That's two in a row for him. Killa has now been shut down, but you see on your mini-map, they're still spawning all the way with the gut spawns. Cinder picks up. Scum turns around, takes out Formal as well. He's going to try to keep it going. This is the five streak so far. He has the Tempest to work with, just 100 away from score streaks. It's so interesting. None of the ARs on Optic Gaming are running high caliber. They're still staying in this game, but we do see the Sender the and Chino ARs are, are being a huge factor. Although they're not getting headshot kills, that headshot damage is what is making a huge impact in a lot of these gunfights. So now we put our eyes once again over towards the half wall. Optic Gaming looks like Karma's going to be able to pick up one. And that's two beautiful kills from them so far. Sender 
Looks like he's gonna work together here with Chino. They wanna take control of this back satellite area. A dart comes onto the map. It's gonna force him into Cinder, and Karma ends up getting the beat down. It's gonna get some more time in the hill for Optic Gaming, especially with Crimson picking that one up. But let's see, Chino was able to pick up two with that dart. They do have control of back satellite. They're not far out of this game at all, but right now you gotta keep this pressure coming towards the hill. Optic Gaming doing a beautiful job of holding it. All right, three players go down for Brown Zero. Chino still responds with a kill, but Skump is there to pick it right back up. Diabolic takes down Formal. Skump still alive. This is what he's just so good at with the sub, trying to find that third kill. Luckily for him, Formal is able to finish it out. And now the D the Ground Zero push is coming from Bunker. Three different players. Formal still alive and able to take down two by his own accord. And that's just what's so scary about Optic Gaming. It's just their, the multi kill capability from so many of the players. We saw Chino highlighted on Maniac come straight down the middle of the map. Skump ends up taking him out and now we have a lot of these players converging around this next hill and once again karma just going off with the shiva as soon as i switch over to him he goes down that dive all making two more very high impact kills here in game one fighting for this rocks control we see three optic gaming players behind diabolic looks like they're fighting from the mansion side again and we'll have to see how optic handles this as karma is going to hit the wall run all around before he can get into a power position it's gonna be an AR battle. Trying to look over Skump here, nothing going down just yet. Looks like Formal's gonna get the opening engagement. Diabolic shuts down Skump. Diabolic finds Karma as well, and he's still alive. Killa finds the third kill, and no trades coming from Optic until they come off the spawn. Diabolic is on the sixth streak, and then the caster curse comes into effect. This, of course, as soon as I switch on to him, and now Killa's gonna be able to pick up one towards this middle cut. There's one getting ready to come over as well for Optic Gaming, but now you think. A lot of these players getting ready to converge on the bunker. Ground Zero did a beautiful job at the hold the first time around, and looks like they're set up for it again. Great kills to start things out. You think Diabolic has worked his way all the way around, just needs to pick this kill up on the Alta Gaming player coming from Highway. The crossfire uh -oh. almost set up if he takes a couple of steps forward, but Crim6 is smart enough to know he shouldn't be set up for the crossfire, but he still will pay for it. Now the Fear Fire coming out of the hands of Chino. This is dangerous. Optic Gaming has lost the rotation once again, and Chino in position with the Fear Fire. There are no lethal grenades in this game from the Bandit Protect, so they have to trade a player to take him down. That they do. Killer, though, is able to come through and find two kills. Skump is in a position, and this is where he's so dangerous on this hill. We've seen him go on a huge, crazy streaks in this very spot. Chino comes through, finds one kill. Most, one of the most dangerous ARs on the team is shut down, but Killa's Dark comes through. Karma has to respond to two players in front of him. Can't even find the first. Sender, unstoppable at the moment, finds a headshot on Skump, and he still has access to the Tempest. They're not able to win on this hill. It's going to come down to the to the first hill in the next rotation. Sender going off once again. Optic really focused on this third rotation of hills. You see Formal ends up taking out Chino. So let's hop on board with Skump. He's in the same position he was when we started the second rotation. Able to stay alive here. Contest time being traded back and forth between both of these teams. The active camo is. going to be absolutely huge here. Skump picks up one, gets the assist on the second. Can he pick this one Tied up? To the this Someone's got to finish huge. that. The assist comes in. Optic Gaming have control of the hill, and you see the spawns for Ground Zero right now. Divide and Conquer coming in from Optic Gaming. They want to close this game out right now. No one, Optic Gaming does not have any form of map control at all, and Sender's sitting pretty in the hard point, watching bottom mansion, but it's still being contested. Nonetheless, Karma, Skump, and Krim go huge despite their lack of map control. Now DT is the one separated. Skump finds Killa near the power position of Square, and it looks like Optic Gaming's still contesting. There it is, Skump takes down Sender. Diabolic responds, but Skump and Krim are still alive, and he's getting full streaks. He's seconds away from the Cerberus, cannot find it. Killa responds with another two-piece, Formal's inside of a smoke grenade. Killa tossing those down for the team. Hellstorm oh. comes in. That's a two-piece farmer still on the hill, and we're going to see this head in the mansion hard point. Look at this, though. Diabolic all the way in the back for ground zero. Able to make one. That's going to be two, but Optic Gaming have control of the hill right now. They have a three-second lead. Diabolic, you have to do something. His teammates coming to the hill. Cinder and Killa doing work. Killa picks up two. Cinder picks up one more. Scum's going to trade that right back. Optic Gaming set to go off here. Scum's going to call in the lightning strike. That takes oh, off the entire it. middle of the map. That's it. Game number one. That's all she wrote. The green wall coming out with the 10 point victory against ground zero gg baby a narrow victory coming from optic gaming in game one despite a stellar performance from sender and chino thanks to a lot of the high caliber on those assault rifles they were able to keep themselves in this game and slaying very efficiently excellent trading coming down from killer by the way who was running the hvk and the man of war for a lot of this match man you talk about a high energy game number one 
you think evac is one where we always talk about it since it's such close quarters we see so many engagements back and forth this stronghold man back and forth every single time especially when we got to that middle courtyard hill all three times these teams are just going for each other and what really came down to it sometimes ground zero did a beautiful job both times holding down that money hill we they were rotating it before first it a lot yeah. they were winning rotations it was so absolutely many times amazing. optic of course they're strong enough to come through and break it but yeah. when you have chino with the purifier when you have just so much utility in the form of those weapons it gets difficult there are no lethals to trade it out either so it going gun on gun is going to be really difficult in that scenario and ground zero worked it out very well i also have to say from what we saw it seems like the flashbangs didn't play as much of a part in that one as we originally thought they were. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't seem like that was a huge impact. It, yeah. It, it seemed more like the it's ARs like, were just all posted up exactly. and, and winning you a lot of their that engagements. Protect and it seems like what you were thinking with that protect doesn't really come out in the map itself. But yeah, they ended up not having to use it. Yeah, we were in a High cow was a much treat. higher. A yeah, mu it a was much really, higher, uh, it's like that move. takes priority over the flashbang as soon as that's left in the game. Right? Yeah, for and sure. That's an absolute treat of a map number one. Game number two, set up to be brief search and destroy. What are your thoughts going into that one? Up to gaming, I mean, you, you got to constantly give them the edge and the fact that the best team in the world. But we look at the things that Ground Zero are capable of. I'm going to have to switch the team color there, colors there for just, in just a moment here. But um, the thing that they're capable of, the, what they're capable of strategically could certainly give them an edge. I mean, we, again, we see it in the Banner Protects before we even get into the game. And then we get into the game and we see that they have the fundamentals down for a lot of these game modes. And they can certainly use that to their advantage. It's just the fact that I still see Optic Gaming as a stronger team overall, and I got to give them the edge in this map. Well, breach, search, and destroy. Up next, Formal sniping, by the way. We, we got a comment on that. Possible 11 <laughs> rounds, and yes, the snipers what are your thoughts a huge on formal sniping? part so far. <laughs> oh, man, I'm just, I'm having flashbacks to Nagafen against Bittersweet already. Just <laughs> said no one ever. <laughs> FM, FMJ PO6 shooting through Palace and Construction. Because I'm absolutely pay for it. But yeah, we've mentioned and highlighted the snipers time and time again throughout MLG Orlando. And that's something that you can use to once again establish that presence over on the construction side, looking up over top. If you're on the top greenhouse, just looking up, waiting for the person to jump over the porta potties. And then if you're back broken, you can get the wall run over the middle of the map. And even then, you can go. It's, I wouldn't say it's advised. You can go top AC with the sniper as well, try yeah. and play for the information as much as possible. And information is going to be key that's term usually we use going into this game too. First sniper is that that spot's usually going to be used later on yep. in the round when you know you already have a general idea of where the enemy team is at. Otherwise, it's an easy way to get picked off by the enemy exactly. sniper, right? So good, you, you brought that up. Very good point there. But uh, looking at the side of Ground Zero, they do have Chino sniper, but I don't think that's going to be any match for formal. Uh, Karma is also just on another level right now. His Shiva this weekend has been a huge factor for them, so I want to see if Ground Zero targets that and the bands are protected and take that out of his hands because that's going to be, I feel like that has a more likely effect mm -hmm. on, a more like, a more significant effect on the game than what the sniper could just for this match. Um, it kind of depends on how the first bloods go, but I think generally speaking, Karma's, Karma Shiva would, would be a big part of this map. And you think that weapons played such a huge part so far throughout the week and a lot of players are using it and using it very well. You think at the beginning of that game, Karma is in the hill with the Shiva and he's still able to pick up two and gets a third one in there as well. So you think of a team like Ground Zero very practice with a lot of things in Black Ops 3. If you do want to go after that, you have the room to adapt, right? But on the other side, you have an Optic Gaming team that, you know, whatever you put in, like, Crim6 or Formal's hand, I'm still scared of anyone, any person on yeah, the team. Whatever sure. you put in their hands, I'm still scared of them. I constantly, constantly praise Crim6 as being just the smartest player in the game. Usually I'll say someone's one of the smartest mm -hmm. players in the game. You know, like, players like Parasite, Jcap, just very cerebral players. Crim6 is the top of the top. Certainly a very capable player. Definitely the game mode for it, where you can get really creative and you can have these different options. And it, it certainly plays towards his strengths in that regard. So guys, just giving the players some time to change over the classes. We'll get this game started just as soon as we can. So, so far, what do you say going into this other than getting rid of the Shiva and sort of forcing their will on? What, what are your keys to victory on the side of Ground Zero? On the side of Ground Zero, of course, it comes down to winning the band and protect, which they've shown they're perfectly capable of doing. They're one of the teams that are not afraid to think outside of the box when it comes to getting through there. Um, and it definitely does upset some of these more top consistent teams. I think that in game, they can't feed formal. They no, need to avoid can't. those picks. They need to respect where he is out on the map. 
and the moment someone re-peaks, roast them. Because this is just, formal, formal sniper right now is incredible. But I definitely think ground zero, especially judging after that first hard point, has what it takes to at least make the search and destroy close, and they could take it. We could see ground zero take a map or two in this series. I wouldn't put it past them one bit. Well, all right. We'll find out what happens in this search and destroy. We're starting up right now, Optic Gaming up one to nothing in this series if you're not familiar when we say ground zero that is the roster of chino cinder diabolic and mr sloth himself those will be your purple boys on the left there so ban and protect going down crim's gonna knock the men of war out right away the overkill is a very common ban in this game mode ground zero following it up with a thermal ban of course targeting the snipers in this game chino may or may not be comfortable with or without it we will have to see rapid fire also comes in uh, high caliber as a reminder for those of you that might have just tuned in after that close 250 to 240 hardpoint game high caliber made it through last time rapid fire did not but there it is uh, og is going to get both of them out of the way overclock has gone as well so what does this leave in the game flashes and concussions are still in lethals mm -hmm. are still in lethals didn't make it in last game at all um no abilities have been banned thus far so we will have access to the big three unless karma and killer have something to say about it so of course you see to half of Shiva. All right, there we go. So I do like this banner protect from ground zero. You get rid of the Shiva, you get rid of overkill, and you get rid of the thermal. Right? A lot of that, two of those targeted towards the snipers, and then the last one still goes and targets the long range potential that we saw in game number one and when we think of search and destroy in general, because those first bloods are going to be very important. If you're ground zero and you pick up that first blood, you have the Whoa, advantage. Look at Look at what's going on on the side of Ground Zero for their special strategy. Yep. The big three is still in the game, guys, mind you. That's why you're seeing Camo Kinetic Armor Heat Wave on the side of Optic Gaming. But Ground Zero has opted to go overdrive and glitch over Kinetic Armor. Wow. Interesting to see. I'll be sure to ask uh, one of the players maybe sometime later today or this weekend what the decision be making behind that was, whether or not that was just maybe a miscommunication or mm -hmm. they just genuinely prefer, which is fine. You know, a lot of these abilities are very powerful depending on how you use them and how you play, of course. It does um, attend to your play style, but it's just a weird kind of thing to pass up kinetic armor, which can essentially turn into multi kills and clutch rounds. So, my thought something to be looking out for overdrive for Cinder. Right, we talked about the sniper potential before, and when you sort of establish a presence like that in the middle of the map or over towards construction, the player with overdrive has to be mindful of that. You think if Optic Gaming have formal picking up snipes over the middle of the map, he's not gonna hit mid-map with the overdrive unless they're just feeling very confident in that push and wanna play around it. Probably would go through Palace. He could, yeah. hit, he could hit construction side as well, but with that being so popular on Breach, Sometimes you just run into a wall of four players, and as soon as you blink, it's like, okay, it's 4v3 already. Yeah, it can also be really dangerous because Optic Gaming has been so good about keeping their communication up mm -hmm. in terms of who has what ability and who might have what ability up in the future. Um, so I, I have a hard time seeing that kind of being overlooked in opening strategies, especially when we get into like round four and five and six and everything. I think they'll be mindful of that depending on who has the most kills and, and the most objective points and such. Um, we also have Skump's Kinetic Armor, which will certainly turn into something huge for the team. Skump with Kinetic Armor is always a targeted thing, especially in respawn game modes. People look straight for that, and you're always going to hear analysts, casters alike, saying, yep, yeah, that's, that's for Skump. Like, that's just... Skump is the, one of the first players you think of when you think of Kinetic Armor. Oh, yeah. Every single time. And even then, you think one-on-one -on -one gunfight, Skump's going to win it 90% of the time, right? And you give him Kinetic Armor, it's guaranteed. Yeah, that, that, Every, that 90 you have a crazy becomes crossfire, a solid. Yeah. yeah. Unless you have a crazy crossfire, there's no way he's not picking up at least one in that situation. Right. Just the cherry on top for Scumpy here. Loading into Breach Search and Destroy, guys. Tweet your predictions with the hashtag MLG Orlando on Fox. This is Paradox. We're getting right into this game as we speak. And I want to hear your prediction for this. Give me a round count prediction. Wow. I don't know. I'm... I don't know what to expect really from Ground Zero. I haven't been able to watch them too much. And Optic Gaming, their last search and destroy, they were, they went the full play second in stage Kingsway. two playoffs. Are you just talking about yeah. this weekend? Yeah, I'm, this weekend I haven't been able okay. to watch to see how they've been playing search and destroy. And you think Optic Gaming is coming off a very close one there against Boys on Kingsman. Look through some of the classes so far. All right. It's like EMP is only one flash, so it's going to be in the hands of Killer, of course, formal. It's going to bring the sniper rifle to the party. Here, so let's let's see what Formal is able to do. Every time someone has a sniper rifle, it tends to like going on board with them, and I'm gonna have Chino highlighted on the other side with Formal. 
The floor is yours. All right, formal rock in the barracks three because remember the thermal the thermal site was banned out of this game. Not going to spot anyone on mid map just yet. Skump though is going to find a, a kill on Killer who was running the HVK and he's staying alive here inside the hardware and he finds a second kill not being traded yet. Spots Chino just around the corner but he didn't find Skump. That's a two piece though. Oh, is he going to get away? No, oh. the long range shots from Skump is going to end the round and almost an ace from this man. But Karma was there to take a, to grab a kill for him. We talked about what he could do when he has kinetic armor. He also can just do it when he doesn't have it, right? This man is so talented at Call of Duty, and you see why there well, yeah, the, to start this one out. And he has his teammates help him out there, too. Like yeah, the, the first shots. And the plays. And the guy was just trying to get away. It was a long range yeah. shot, though, which is an impressive shot. It's yeah, a long it's range shot. Especially uh, currently on this patch, right? You know, the BMP takes the a nerf. hit. And right. now, Optic Gaming will be on the attack and stay on board with them. High the ground zero on their attack in the next round. And Scump. He's definitely a bomb carrier here. He's going to be spotted, taken out. Diabolic picks up first blood, Ooh, but Formal caught him. absolutely takes him out. Let's hop on board with the man that picked up that snipe as he has one player <gasps> threatening Who behind him, that? and he's able to stay alive. There was a ground zero play. That's Chino that was on the flank and had Formal lined up, but missed the rest of his first burst and the second, allowing Formal to get away. And he doesn't have to pay for that opening pick at all. Now we're going to see him putting the bomb down on the B bomb site. Chino. Hanging around research has to pick a bomb site soon. Is Optic Gaming already picked it for him? That's going to be B bomb site with the plant. And now we see the crossfire from the two Optic Gaming players remaining. Can Chino clutch the one v two? All right, here we go. Chino, the floor is yours. And now position has been given up. Prim six comes around the corner, comes out, picks it up. Formal. All he has to do is slide out and secure the kill. That's two in a row for Optic Gaming. And man, Formal snipe was just like immediate you think the yeah. push comes in he's like hey guys what's up i didn't see you the first round but you know this one i got you yeah i mean the the, the idea of the flank there was supposed to be that chino was supposed to disrupt yep. that for when formal is looking over mid but they weren't he wasn't able to get there in time and he also wasn't able to fire the shots in time and, and accurately of course and on the side of ground zero though in this next round we do see a frag and an emp i'd imagine those might be used for the b bomb site let me see which player exactly that was that was running it for you it's going to be Sender. Sender. Yep, Sender's yep. already tossed the EMP and spotted nothing. A lot of the Optic Gaming players are hovering around mid-map. So you got to wonder, on ground zero, might make a play call to either rotate over to a site or just kind of adjust their setup waiting for the flank, and that's going to be Killer that finds the first blood on Skump. Formal still in position top green. He spots one player moving up to the B-bomb site, but backs up. He knows he's under fire and still challenges anyway. That's Sender that takes him down. Three players from ground zero on the B-bomb site. Killer spots Karma on mid-map, and that's going to be a round win for ground zero. I say, that's a very impressive round from ground zero, and what opens it up, Killer's presence on the map, right? He's able to go and take out the player that was starting to believe that was around top AC. As soon as that comes in, Opti Gaming, their strategy sort of has to rework, right? You have to respect the fact that that player is in a position like that, that has that sort of power on the map, and the adapt does come in, but not able to secure the round. Now they're going to be on the attack once again. Scum, bomb in his hands. Formal still has this sniper out, looking over towards Diabolic and Cinder. All right, Formal waiting for someone to expose just too, a little too much of their body, but Ground Zero is not going to bite on that bait. They're not letting it happen. Two trophies go down. They're blocking grenades, disrupting the utility from Ground Zero. Two grenades gone. He knows there's someone top green. He's waiting for it, but cannot catch it. Three players on the opposite end. There's still one Ground Zero player at A, just to make sure that they don't fake the sight or anything. And look at this. That's Crim6 on a flank at the moment. He's such a smart player, and he's able to do a lot of these in the respawn and search and destroy game modes. Let's see if it works out for him. Finds a kill on a Chino. Here it is. Oh. Finds the second kill, benefiting in a huge way from it. Formal is also able to catch one on Diabolic, and Killa is left in a 1v2. Trapped in the middle of the map. He does have a flashbang here to help him out. And he does spot one player on Optic Gaming. That was Formal flying his way across the map. But they know he's here. Killa picks up one. The second one is here. Mr. Oh. Sloss, can you do oh. it? He cannot connect with the shots. And Optic Gaming will go up by two rounds. Look at Krim. The way Krim was peeking this, just, oh, just kind of jiggle peeking this wall in his gunfight. Kind of won the gunfight with how quickly he can move with that stock. It made him so difficult to hit. To hit. Krim 6 is so weak in that engagement, too. You think... Killer connects with one, maybe two. Yeah. And that kind of whiffed a lot right there. Ties it up. So now ground zero gonna be on the attack once again. Looks like they're only using the sniper on those defensive rounds because we did hear it come out for them. And the last one, off to gaming. Gonna give 
set up in the same exact spot we saw them in round number one. Skump is going to play inside once again, just waiting for someone for ground zero to challenge. Lots of nades going off on mid-map from ground zero just to spot check and they connect with nothing. So I think that's going to cause them to move this move here a little bit slower, kind of be hesitant because they have a feeling that the players are going to be around this site. And it looks like they're now going to rotate towards mid-map. Maybe fearing just how ineffective that push might be. Three Optic Gaming players swarming B. They're pushing through, though. We're going to see an engagement between Chino and someone. He finds it on Crimzik. Skump is there for the trade. And now Skump's just going to try and regen his health. And Formal still playing around Palace with no action. Expect it's to see him go towards middle map here soon as more engagements go down. You think this is a really smart play on the side of Karma, right? Back up, get out of oh, there. Skump, Skump fell off the map. Fortunately, falls off of the map. So numbers advantage favor ground zero. They have complete control of the B site as well. Cinder not getting the bomb down just yet. And you think... One's going to be the furthest one pushed up for the Gaming, followed by Karma. Go over to Cinder. Do you want to see if he's getting this bomb down? All right, bomb is down. Kill is going to be watching the bottom. Diabolic has eyes on the bomb side itself. Trying so to see if he destroyed the trophy system that was on the side. It looks like he did. One player just around the corner, though. Diabolic not going to bother with that gunfight. Karma, with his inmate in position, is definitely a threat. But he's just going to try and play some time. Top green's going to go down. That's Sender. One player bottom green again, just playing that time. And Diabolic's on the flank. Awesome bait and switch coming out of ground zero there. They know where Formal's at. Diabolic picks up both, and ground zero have worked their way back to have a round, one round deficit here in game two versus Optic Gaming. If you're just joining us, Optic up 1-0 in this series that they were able to take strong full hard point. That one pretty much came down to the wire and it looks like we're in for a treat of a map number two as well. Ah, that's a tough gunfight for Formula to win right there. Diabolic playing that as well as he could in the West. The rest of Ground Zero cooperating with the flank as well is definitely huge for them. As soon as he got out of that first gunfight because he knew he wasn't going to win, he said, this is a flank opportunity right here. We know where Karma is at. I know how much time I have and it worked out for him. The tack mask coming out on the side of Optic Gaming as well. Looks like they're going to go straight towards the middle of that. Crimp6 has already spotted one behind the AC. Chino, though, can be the first one to be able to strike. Sender picks up one as well before Crimp6 is finally able to connect on that kill, but he has now found himself trapped inside the middle hut in a 1v2. Ooh. You really don't expect someone to come out on top in that engagement. Like, he's completely trapped. He's Both pinned. doorways are oh, being he's watched. Pinned. You have to do something, and maybe if you have, like, you wave in that situation or something, you can get out, but normal just gun on gun, you expect Ground Zero to take that, or whatever team is in that position of power every single time. Yeah, so there it is. Crim6, unfortunately, not able to finish off the 1v2. Switching over to Tack Mask was a great play. He, you did see him get tagged up by that flash right off the start, but it didn't affect him because of the Tack Mask. He's able to find himself a kill. The rest of his team just couldn't stay alive and keep the play going. So Ground Zero is going to come out on top, and we're all tied up 3-3. If EMP's coming out again, the constant spot checking, this is the exact same play we saw from Ground Zero a few rounds ago. And that EMP, I believe, should have connected with someone. It looks like once again, the kill is going to play the same exact spot. Off the game, though, do have control of the middle of the map. Crim6 will be the first one to strike. Picks up the first blood there on Chino. Shots still being fired back and forth. You see Killer has joined the rest of his team here around this top AC area. And this is a bit dangerous right now, but no one the game is really going to be here and you think just a couple of seconds ago they had full control in the middle of the map. Optic Gaming with the numbers advantage rotates as a team to swarm four players on the B bomb site trying to keep that man advantage in this 4v3 situation. We do look on the side of ground zero. They have access to two specialist abilities. I'm not sure of when we're going to see it come into play. The bomb does go down on the A bomb site here though. That's going to cause Optic Gaming to rotate over. Diabolic attacking up one player, top broken, not able to finish it, though Skump gets the better of him. Oh. Finds the second after the reload cancel. Awesome double kill coming from Skump. Killa last alive in a 1v3, has the camo, but no bother to use it. The retake from Optic Gaming comes out perfectly, only or nearly perfectly, only losing one player. And you think this is a heads-up play, right? Skump picks up two that round. He's getting closer and closer to this kinetic armor, which can completely swing momentum in a game, and not to mention he's getting closer to streaks as well. Optic Gaming established the lead once again in the search and destroy. Absolutely, so there it is. Karma in a good position. Stable to pretty easily outnumber and finish off Killa with, you know, reassurance that his teammates would have come through and traded it anyway. And that's another, op that's another round one for Optic. They're up by one. It's going to be 4-3 again if you're just tuning in. The hard point concluding at 250 to 240. We're seeing another very close search and destroy so far as we head into round eight. So looks like a lot of the team composition on the side of ground zero is finally going to come into play. And look at Chino. Spons looks like he spawned at least one player in the middle of the map. And 
Crimson going to be spotted, taken out first. Scump trying to make things happen over by the A bomb site, but the 4v2 man advantage now in favor of oh, look Ground look where the zero. bomb's down at. This is beautiful on the side of Ground Zero. Uh, he's completely trapped. Diabolic looks like he's going to be the first one to try and engage this killer. Picks up Formal. Karma, the last one up, the 1v4. Comes up top AC. Diabolic flies through. How you doing, Karma? And we're going to tie it up for a piece. Karma attempting the 1v4. He's done it within the past hour and a half, but it's not <laughs> going to happen this time. Diabolic shuts it down. I believe, I believe that was a 1v3, actually, 1v3. was it? It was yep. a 1v3. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, some more space to work with in that one, too. Yeah. Over Had on access Redwood. to the heat wave. And, yeah. Great wall running movement on Redwood there. And not too much of an opportunity for any of that here. Heavily outnumbered. But heading into round nine, we're all tied up once again. A very back and forth search and destroy. Ground Zero is really keeping themselves in this game. Look at Killer right now. He's able to connect with the flashbang and now uses the active camo to pick up the very important first blood on Scump. Look at the position here. Cinder's going to play this perfectly. Although Diabolic goes down, they have position on the A site and they have the numbers advantage as well. Killa was still being a nuisance over by the B site. Pretty much holds formal over there all alone and Karma's going to rotate back over. All right. Bit of a split play here as we see Killa holding down cages. We have one player mid. That's going to be Chino and what looks like Sender sitting on the A bomb site with the bomb. And no karma's around broken, firing a few shots off towards mid. We'll see how the ground zero players react to that. Formal is waiting for some oh, of the ground man. zero just to peek. Imagine, this, imagine their surprise that when they look for karma firing off the M8, they find Formal pre-aiming with a sniper and he finds a pick. This we'll is to dangerous. See how karma won't be able to stay alive. So Formal is now the last hope on the side of Optic Gaming. Will not oh, be nope. able to pick up one. Chino shuts him down. Ground zero one round away from picking this one up. And Cinder doing the majority of the objective work on the side of Ground Zero. Three bomb plants so far. Easy burst there from Chino, able to find the kill. Top broken. And it looks like Ground Zero is just one round away from closing yep. out map two. They could get their map win up on here. I did say that I, I have a strong belief they could win at least yeah. one or two maps here. Opti Gaming, of course, still my favorite in the series. They're going to be able to, I think they're going to be able to close out the series overall and maybe this map, but Ground Zero is looking great right now. I do want to see what M6 does with this knife. Yeah, it looks like Formal's already spotted someone up top. Immediately EMP left and right and now his position. It's been called out. All three of these players really stopped by those EMPs and I believe a grenade came in there as well. It's Ground Zero still trying to work and pick up the first blood. Diabolic threatening down low. So you think this is a really good setup for them because they have Cinder looking up top. Diabolic down low who will be able to pick up the first blood. Takes out Crim6 but this bomb is down at B. Still the push coming in from Ground Zero. The numbers going in oh, their favor wave. even with the heat wave on their own teammate. That's four in a row. Ground Zero striking back the four streak from Chino. He goes off 11 and 5 in game two. That was four in a row for him. That's a great play. Four kills for Chino in a row. Huge part of game one, an even bigger part of game two. Ground Zero is going to close it out in round 10 with a 6-4 score. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tied series here. Yeah. You think Ground Zero looked really good in the hard point, right? They held the hills they needed to hold. Game Won the two rotation. goes in the favor. So now game three, they're pretty much, when Alta Game makes a mistake, you think Alta Gaming a lot of teams at this level, right? You make one mistake, they're going to capitalize on it. Ground Zero doing the exact same thing here in the series, and it's showing. So now we're set up for game number three, EVAC Uplink. How do you see that one going? I think we're actually looking at two good uplink teams. I think that this could certainly go either way. If these first two maps are indicative of anything, it's that you can't count Ground Zero out entirely. Oh, not, not at all. They certainly have some sort of footing in this series. You think from their performance at stage two, even now, a lot of people are doubting them and what they can do. And then you have people like, yeah, you really can't look over this team. They came to play, right? This is their time to shine. And they're showing up so far in this matchup against Alpha Gaming. They can hang in the hard point. They won the search and destroy. EVAC, Uplink, really, I feel like this is a huge oh, I've seen, test. We've seen them, big sure. things come from Ground Zero, though, back when they were DT. We've certainly seen some huge matches out of Diabolic. Killa has shown he can ste step up in the slaying yep. column. Now, I don't think we're going to see any huge streaks coming from them against Optic Gaming, but there will be certain, there certainly will be moments where all the team just clicks and they start scoring and scoring. Optic, though, to the same token, certainly capable of doing that as well. They're known to capitalize on a mistake 
on multiple different ways, right? They can capitalize and relay. And that's something they're very good at is setting up for the next play. And so guys, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, even then, you think of a team that plays as smart as ground zero. When they're not on the favored side, you think they do sort of the same thing we saw Rise do against Complexity, right? You rotate the drone around the map, try and pick up as much as many points as possible when you're on that side of the map because that can end up converting into a map. All right, guys, loading into the Bandit Protector, we see right off the bat again, flashbangs protected by Chino. That's exactly what happened in the hard point, followed up by the overclock. So same story so far. High Caliber did make it in in the first respawn game mode. We'll have to see if that happens this time. I think that we're going to see a Man of War ban again. We might. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that come out, right? And now Kill though has been adapting to that. He's been yeah. using the HVK a lot more. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you normally think of that as a target ban towards Kill, and it's like, hey, I'll just pull up the HVKs. He's done it already in this series. And Kinetic Armor going to be taken out once again for this game number three. Overdrive will follow that up. We always see the Overdrive taken out in Uplink and CTO. Kinetic Armor coming through. Nothing going for the Shiva yet. Some of the more um, high-impact weapons and, and protect and ban potential so far in this series. There it is. There's the ban for the Shiva from Ground Zero. The Man of War follows it up. So there are your two weapon bans. The last two bans are still available, and we still have not seen any sight of High Caliber or Rapid Fire. Um, Afterburner still in the game, so a lot of different drone plays can happen outside of the map, and it's all up to formal here. Afterburner or High Caliber? Those are the so two highest priority bands. They go for the HCXD. HCXD, so they both make it into the game. Again, guys, we're seeing a lot of ability still in the game, I believe. I think only, what, camo? Was it camo or overdrive was banned? I, I actually missed that. I think it was very early Overdrive. on. It was after um, It was after the initial, it was the third ban. It was an ability. Overdrive? I think, yeah, I think it was overdrive as well. So we'll have to see how the special strap goes down. Scythe comes in, of course. Heat Wave being picked by both Karma and Diabolic. Some of the more aggressive in-your-face SMG players certainly want to see them running that. Krim is going to pop on the camo. So it was camo that made it through. Overdrive mm -hmm. was the one that was banned, of course. A very common ban for uplink and CTF. Formal rocking with his normal scythe. So really nothing too crazy on either side. Um, we're seeing kind of a stylistic, or no, not a stylistic. Actually, like camo on both sides, T-Wave both sides, Tempest scythe. Okay, so Optic Gaming is going with one weapon, three abilities. And on the side of ground zero, they're going with two weapons, two abilities. So... You look at this game number three, and I'm starting to think of something because those weapons come in. This is the second time you really set up and you give control of that last ban of Protect over to Optic Gaming, and for the second time in a row, they let High Caliber come into play. Yeah, I, I wonder if they're actually going to use it this time as uh, Ground Zero was the only team using it. Optic Gaming, of course, still came out on top, um, but that was... Uh, Certainly an impactful attachment there. With the flashbangs being protected, we didn't see them have as much of a difference in the hard point. But in the search and destroy, Ground Zero is using them quite a bit to spot check and try and figure out what they wanted to do with their with their opening strategies and executions and everything. So I'm curious to see how that changes as we get into a different game mode, which is uplink. After game, we went two and two on evac uplink during stage two of the Call of Duty World League. Want to pull that one out? Just a quick statistic. For all of you at home watching, don't really have the ability to pull up what they would do on LAN in that environment. But when this team was under Dream Team, they went 3-3. Three and three, So that was 500 for both teams in the online league for the Call of Duty World League. So set for another game. And the next 10 minutes, we will see if Ground Zero can take a respawn from Optic Gaming. Or if Optic Gaming shows up once again. And... Judging by the way the first game went, I wouldn't be surprised if this one's close as well. Paradox, can you give us a quick, while we're loading in this map here, can you give us a quick uh, reminder of what the next two maps are? So, following this one up, we see Capture the Flag on Fringe. That one is guaranteed. And then we go all the way to Game 5, Hunted Search and Destroy. We'll round things out. I don't think we've seen Hunted Search and Destroy at all in any of these best of five series so far in Orlando, but I um, could be wrong. Phase and Rise went to Game 5 right, in Phase 1. Go. Which I think that's happened three times now between Phase and oh, Rise, where a game, no, in total, like throughout all the Call of yeah. Duty World League, not just this weekend, um, where they've ended in a Game 5 on Hunted S&D. Pretty funny to see that. But guys, loading into the evac uplink here. Again, tweet out your predictions now that we've seen Ground Zero take a map off of Opti Gaming. We're not going to see a 3-0. Some people might have predicted that because of how strong this team is and the win that they just came off of. But Ground Zero is showing that they're still in this game. Tweet out your predictions using hashtag MLG Orlando. And let's get right into this game. Switch, let's flip through some of these weapons. So Karma's going to be running high cal. Yep. Uh, see if Formal is. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna look on the Warner side of not ground when zero. Looked. No, he's reflex quick draw and stock. Uh, looks like Chino will not have it. Cinder not either, because ground zero is going to run three submachine guns and right off the start this is what you would like oh, wow. to see from ground zero just going to go for this rotation diabolix in a huge position here he ends up winning that gunfight against formal karma has to throw something into the system for Octa gaming he falls as well cinder though going to get rid of the drone expect front to chino to pick that one up really Does bold play it. really old bold opening uh opening play there from ground zero grab the drone and wrap back before they even got any kills luckily for him his team was able to find three we'll have to see if something comes from this play though it looks like Optic Gaming wrapped back appropriately and were able to take down two different players. So Sender is here to make a difference. Finds the assist. Diabolic catches the rest of the player. One more top bar. That's going to be Diabolic with the two-piece. And Chino's still in position for the drone respawn. Yeah, and this is what really you kind of didn't want to see if you're a fan of Ground Zero right now. Because of the position that Optic Gaming had on the map, they were able to pick up the drone with ease. Of course, they had two set up there. Chino was able to take out one, but the push is on, and Cinder's going to try to stop it. Crimson is currently in control of that satellite drone, but Cinder will be able to pick up one. Crimson has worked his way on the outside of the map. Of course, after the does make it into this match, but he spotted taken out with ease, and just like that, still Optic Gaming do have control of the drone spawn just like that diabella picks up a huge kill on scump just needs to take out karma which he is able to do and the drone once again going into the hands of ground zero so crim's drone right there takes a player out of position from ground zero however they don't they weren't able to capitalize on the two players that were in green and now ground zero is taking the drone and again immediately wrapping back this has to be this has to be the decision uh this, this is usually one of the better places to take it on this map when they're up when the whole team is up because they have to sacrifice a player on that wall run to combat the drone carrier and it looks like he's going for just that but karma close behind him catches a couple inmate shots in his back and it falls right off the map three kills go in favor of optic gaming and foremost in a huge position for his team right here Ooh, chino. however chino smells the play immediately and is able to shut it down two kills go in favor of ground zero however the scumps there for the one point play the interception from diabolic ground zero is playing very well so far very oh. uh, very responsive uh first first few minutes from ground zero that's beautiful you think we're throughout we're through the first half we're almost halfway through the first half of this game two minutes 50 seconds and so far ground zero is playing this beautifully the beat down comes in and unfortunately killing gets spotted taken out since you're trying to save the play but he goes down as well the game you control the sound like you're gonna wrap this one all the way through glass try and set up the effective push and scary for ground zero just a second ago because Optic Gaming was set up for that spawn trap that everyone is so familiar with here on EVAC. They're going to try and do it again, and someone that we're going to have to watch out for is going to say it's Scump. He's on a four streak right now and high psychosis to work. Scump, one player in, in engagement with him just on top of green. That's Diabolic that wins it. He does have access to his special stability once he comes off spawn. It looks like a couple of players might have access to it here shortly. Heat Wave comes in. Diabolic finds two kills. And it doesn't look like anybody from Ground Zero is going to grab the drone anyway. I would have thought that right there they'd make a play to move up together. And it's going to be a little delayed as everyone's coming up off spawn, though. Killa is still able to find a kill. Someone's on the wall run on the outside. That's Formal that does it. His flank could be huge here, but it looks like no one's even setting up for the interception. Killa with camo is going to run it straight through for the dunk, putting the first two points on the board for Ground Zero. I was thinking the exact same thing. And the delay push comes in. Now Chino will be in control of the satellite drone. He's making his way up the map. Killa's going to be number four. The long... One point toss going to go up and over and formal is going to come away from that one with an interception. The rap is going to start. Diabolic is in position to sort of stop this push. The top one with him. And that drone looks like it. progress will be stopped. Optic Gaming is going to try and play this a little bit slowly. Drone down. Optic grabs it. Formal's in a gunfight. Crim's trying to get away with it and wrap back through his base. There's been a whole lot of that so far in this evac uplink. Just a minute remaining. And Optic has yet to score. Karma. Karma. Finds an engagement on top AC and then pops the heat wave for the player just in front of him. But Sender is still able to get on, come out on top. And looks like Krim is in a decent situation with his team in front of him. The score pops the camo. This should be at oh. least a one-point play. But no, Sender playing that short game finds a two-piece. And the drone is now in the hands of ground zero. That's a turnover. Sender was trying to pick up another one as well. And long range we will be able to find the better engagement there against Karma. Look at this. Formal is going to be the next one to challenge. And... He's still threatening on the map, and Crim6 picks up two. Let's hop more with him. Drone carrier for Optic Gaming. You see Formal is going to be the lead this blocker there. This is a scary situation for Ground Zero. Even with 14 seconds left, Optic Gaming can easily get the forward pass and get more points on the board. 
Karma needs to hold this angle. Scum has control of the satellite drone. Karma staying alive. Two seconds left on the board. The forward pass oh, turns up. Oh, that was a great Gaming pass. with a 4-2 lead going into the second half. That was a great pass coming out of Scump. I doubt he wouldn't have been able to dunk that if he didn't put it through. Heads up play from him and the rest of Optigaming to coordinate it. Looks like Krim was waiting there for it too. He may have been, but regardless, he gave it a shot killer down and get the two-point play on the board. And Optigaming comes in the half with a new score of 4-2. So what do you expect to see from ground zero on the better side going into this one? Uh, more of what we've seen from them in the first half. They've, they've had very intelligent play. I mean, they're only down by two points. Uh, they're, on their, they're on a decent side now to where they can try and set up that spawn trap and get a relay going on AC. Really, if they just remain consistent with what they've been doing, I think they'd be fine. They've been playing very good uplink so far. It looks like you did hear a special ability. There are abilities in the side of optic. Second. And Unfortunately, doesn't like too much use there, and Scump position to take on time on the field is using shot. No problem. Takes one up, turns around, and is going to do the next one here. When his back turned, there's almost nothing he can really do. Let's see his eyes in the back of his head. Karma's going to be running the satellite drone, and Scump is in a perfect position. He picks up the kill here on Chino, and pretty much guaranteed. There we go. So let's hop over to Crim6 as that Cerberus is down. Active camo pop. Oh, could this be a Cerberus here soon? And I think they already have one on the map. What more can you do? Oh, so he's, he's, rapid, so he's doubling up lead. on them? Yeah. Okay, cool. Wasn't sure exactly how that progress bar was looking. I did know that he built up a lot of the score streaks within the past minute or so, but it's looking like he's going to stay alive in the enemy base and become even more of a nuisance. Dream Team, or Ground Zero, excuse me, still forcing to spawn over towards Bar. And that Cerberus is just going to be such a huge problem. It's right in their base. That's that's not looking good. And now, again, Optic Gaming is going to let the snowball roll. This is huge for their momentum, and they're going to relay it, sending players back to grab the drone. Formal in a gunfight, throws the drone in his hands and gets the better at Chino, but Diabolic is there to trade it off. And now Karma still able to take down Diabolic, but no one in control of the drone. But Optic is in a good position to keep it going. Keep that pressure on. Karma finds a kill. Hellstorm comes in. That's two dead. He does kill his teammate, but another Cerberus is in the hands of Skump as well as the drone. The play could come in here for, for the two-piece, especially if Crimsick has two pieces like that. Two-point play oh coming in from Scum. Crim6 has now made it a five streak. We saw a seven or an eight streak earlier from Scump, and this is what we talk about all the time. A team like Optic Gaming it just takes one thing, and they just start firing on all cylinders, 12 to two. That's what, that's actually all 12 so far unanswered points. Believe, yeah, right? this is where this is where I said Optic Gaming was so dangerous when we were talking about it before the game started. I said they can certainly capitalize on mistakes in more than one way. They won't just score on you one time. They'll make it two, three, and four if you let them do so. And they've just been relaying it over and over again. They're always able to send a player back to grab that drone and bring it right into the base. And especially with the help of that Cerberus, it just makes their job ten times easier. Crimstick still alive in the base, shutting things down. That's a one-point play for Optic Gaming to increase this huge deficit of 13 to 2. And that's another Cerberus down on the map as well. As the drone's being passed back at Fort Center's going to be the furthest one pushed up. Four ground zero. Spots formal. Cleans them up. But Scump's Cerberus is doing absolute work as his teammate Karma is going to get the forward pass over to Krim6 who once again uses the active camel to the best of his ability. Chino doesn't see him at all. The points go in. The kill comes in as well. And you think just a second ago you had what, seven streak coming out of formal. Another crazy streak going out of Crim6 as well. How's the game set up to walk away with map number three? Yeah, this is looking like it's going to be a real one-sided uplink. I don't see this going any other way. As I mentioned, Optic Gaming is just one of those teams that can certainly go on those streaks. They have so many players that are just potential of that. And Crimsix on his uh, on his heels, 27 and 13 with four points on the right side of that column there for the objective. You can't sleep on that. Crim's a huge part of this game. Oh, my. Look at that one-point toss. I absolutely love it. However, two will go down on the side of Optic Gaming. Ground two trying to answer back in the slang department, but they need to get some more points on the board. So at this point, it's still unlikely Ooh, okay, God, for Ground Zero to walk away with this game, but what do they need to do if they want to get some more points on the board and make this game look a little prettier? Find a time machine and um, go back to the part where Crim6 got score streaks and then Scump followed it up with more score streaks and then a spawn trap. Yeah, you're going to have to go back to that time period. A minute left in the game. This deficit's not going to get any smaller. Looks like they were going to pick up one. Diabolic trying to pick up two. And one thing, although you see Diabolic sitting at 19 and 19, some of the plays he's had on this map, time and time again, he's been picking up two pieces left and right. And they've been pretty good on the side of ground zero, making some impact on the map. But 
You think right there, Chino's really the only one that can stop this push coming from out the game, and he ends up falling. Kill is in position here as well, but they're gonna go for the lower wall run. Scump is staying alive. That's another dunk on the board. Out the gaming. One play away, they can break the 20 mark. Diabolic is the only one here, and he's trying to make sure it doesn't get to that point. Yeah, I think him him sitting here. That it, it, there's 20 seconds left, not too much to do, but he knows they're gonna come back to relay, which is what they've been doing for the past five or six minutes here. Um, Looks like Scump's well on his way to getting another Cerberus in his hands. Pops that Psychosis, there it is. Fully streaked out. Shutting down the Tempest alongside Crim6. at 20 points on the board. A nice even number to end it here in the last three seconds. Opti Gaming running away with Uplink in a very dominating fashion paradox. They end the game on a combined 13 streak. Inside of Opti Gaming, and you see last points going on the board, and Karma gets it done with the M8 as well. Opti Gaming. Look at that, man, sharing the objective, getting the slang done, and you think that's a pretty it's rough game for Killa on the side of Ground Zero as well. Yeah, this this map here, Evac Uplink, it's really funny to see that High Caliber made it through, and yet who made the most impact were the, the two guys that were running subs the most time, right, most of the time, was Scump and Krim going double positive, lots of objective pressure, mm -hmm. uh, keeping keeping Ground Zero in their base, calling in those streaks and making it even more difficult than it already was for them to answer back to it. Fantastic play out of Opti Gaming that Uplink there. I thought it would be a lot closer than what it would than what it was man i thought so too and you know for the first half it looked like it right we're what four two going into the second yeah. half i believe ground zero and came out with a, a pretty decent first half and evac is a map that time and time again we see can snowball out of control and that's exactly what you saw there so if ground zero want to force this game five they're gonna have to get things done on a fringe good old game of capture the flag up next Fringe CTF here. Uh, I think a big part of this matchup is again going to be the bands it protects. Really, any any matchup you see with Ground Zero in it, you can usually bet on uh, the respawns. Uh, or the, excuse me, the band it protect having a huge impact on how the respawns go. The Shiva did not make it through in that uplink, as we saw. It didn't make too much of a difference because the VMPs of Crim6 and Scump were just too strong. And now getting in the CTF, the Shiva is usually something you see Crim Rock, or excuse me, on Fringe. The Shiva is something you usually see Crim Rock, but throughout this weekend it's been Karma, at least on land, dominating with it. So, so I'm curious to see how that goes. Do you think capture the flag sometimes ends up playing a little bit slow? And, you know, the potential for overtime, we'll see some of what can happen a lot of the time because do you think team composition is going to play a huge part in this game because you're able to pick up two, like, say, a Tempest that opens the map up. You have seven and a half seconds where it's essentially a four on two. You're able to pick up that flag, get out of the base in time, and... If you just hold the cuts, you're gonna come away with a point on the board. Yeah, getting in this match, I've seen some pretty big plays from Sender on Fringe CTF yep. in the past. Uh, especially with his Tempest, at times he can be a huge nuisance on mid-map and train tracks with his M8. So I'm looking for him to be a pretty high impact player throughout this match. Uh, on the side of Opti Gaming, again, Krim and Karma, I think are gonna be a big part of things. Formal, of course, has that tendency to be streaky. And, um, Realistically, I don't I don't think I see this going to a game five. Even though we've seen huge, huge plays coming from Diabolic. It's dope. Diabolic, I think he's made one of the Sony top five plays with one of his uh, streaks that he got around Barn yep. with his sub plays on, on uh, Fringe CTF. But still, I think that Opti Gaming is just a more consistent respawn team overall. I think that they do close it out 3-1. I think this is just going to be the one map that Ground Zero gets was that S&D. Well, the winner of this, of course, goes against the winner of Team Envious and Rise Nation. So it's a tough task for whoever comes up on top in this one for sure. And you think you're set up for most probably El Classico. <laughs> you could say the phrase Possibly. comes out if Optic Gaming are able to close the series here in this game number four. And we have 10 minutes to see which team can come up on top in Capture the Flag. And you know, break it down a little bit. When we look at Capture the Flag, as a game mode, what do you want to do to walk away with that victory? Well, uh, I mean, some of the EU guys, it just depends on the region you play at. We don't have EU guys here, but some of the EU guys tend to sit one player back in their base and then only have three push up. But more so in North America, we have some teams that opt to that style. We saw Kingsman adopting the style on a couple of their CTFs earlier today, and it worked out pretty well for them against LG, except for LG was able to clutch up the last second. This was on EVAC CTF. Um, but Basically, you want to you want to slowly move up the map, right? There's going to be lots of times where players are sitting and pre-aiming a corner and waiting. 
right? Because they, have, they don't have sight of everybody on the other team. They don't have a general uh, mental image of where the other players are. And they want to find themselves a pick before they can move up on the map as a team. And then they want to get a flag pull. And of course, you want to block and dictate those spawns and pull the flag as far away from them as possible. So that's just a very fundamental part of Opti Gaming. I mean, of, uh, of CTF. I was going to say that's something that Opti Gaming and Ground Zero certainly have down at this point. These guys have been playing CTF for years, and that should come as no surprise to them how to play for in CTF. Oh yeah, for sure. And you think when you mentioned sort of the slow playing CTF that we see a lot over from European teams on the fringe, someone will be set up back grandmas, you know, working all the power positions over there. You can have one around silos. There's one on a truck that's all the way in the back of the map as well. On the other side, if you're back barn, you can set up on the power position behind the rocks. And all of those are at your disposal as well. So game number four, set to be a good one. Absolutely here. So guys, uh, since we are in the third map, we're just giving Opti Gaming and Ground Zero a chance to just take a quick bathroom break, giving them a moment to get mentally prepared for this CTF with it being tied 2-1, or with not, well, that's not quite a tie now, is it 2-1? With Opti Gaming being up 2-1, of course we want the most competitive series we can get, so we want to give the players a little bit of time here. So we're going to hit a quick break, make sure everyone is ready for this game number four. When we return, capture the flag on fringe between Optic Gaming and Ground Zero.
Hello and welcome back to the MLG Orlando Open 2016. I am Fox and I'm joined here by Paradox. We have Optic Gaming facing off against Ground Zero and Optic just came off of a 2-1 victory. Or no, is, is in a 2-1 series lead at the moment after their victory on EVAC Uplink. See that wordplay right there? Fix that right up. And we're getting in the band and protect of Capture the Flag. Coming off of that huge stomping from EVAC Uplink, you gotta wonder, can Ground Zero answer back? Skump is gonna start things off with the Man of War band, and Ground Zero is gonna respond with a Kinetic Armor band. So, Kinetic Armor taking out once again in this series. Overdrive, following that one up. That's a camera overclock and rapid fire. The Shiva taken out once again, and I'm wondering. High caliber, is it gonna be? Exactly. We've seen it come through twice this season. Oh, there it is! Three out of the four games so far. High caliber has made it through. And on French CTF, a map with really long sight lines. We could see lots of AR play here again. So, sometimes, you know, you I think before we saw like four ARs on French. But, you know, game number four in this series so far. In the specialist trial, we have Psychosis on the side of Cinder and Skump Killer. Not surprised, gonna bring out the Vision Pulse for this one, try and get as much information as possible when some of the flag runs are coming in. Meanwhile, Chino and Form will be holding things down with the side. Yep, Vision Pulse, very good ability to use in CTF. Happy to see Killer grabbing that. That's something that uh, Krim actually used, used to use a lot in this game mode, but instead they're opting to go two weapons and two abilities, so he's going to run with the Tempest. Uh, on the side of Ground Zero, of course, just one weapon. That's going to be the Scythe, something Chino's been running a bit in the respawn game modes throughout the series. However, if we're talking about a Scythe on Scythe matchup, I cannot commend Formal Scythe en enough. That's the man for to look out for on that. Sender is a player that often runs the Tempest on this map, but he's actually going to go with Psychosis. What do you think about that, Paradox? So, Psychosis is something that I guess love-hate relationship with, personally, but... Looking at this, I, I'm not surprised to see it in a capture flag, right? Because you just yeah. I'm, I mean, it's there's, it's not a big deal. It's just yeah. It's just out of his norm. He likes to run the tempest. This exactly. Way. So you think, yeah. I mean, you have your teammates to back you up, right? And you can still play for a lot of information. With that, you think psychosis plus risen coals can make a good combo in some situations. Of course, comes down to a lot of individual plays, right? As a lot of these maps end up doing, but. We have 10 minutes to see what Ground Zero are made of and if they can force the game number five. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, if you're just tuning in, going to give you a very quick recap. And actually, first off, an update on what's going on between Infused and LG. I was, or, ex excuse me, yeah, Infused and LG. Wasn't able to see a whole lot. I wasn't able to see the series score because they're playing on the side station. We're currently off stream. Uh, a few minutes into the first half of what looked like an uplink on Fringe, um, it looks like one of the it looks like infuses up 1-0 i believe so but there is an infused there is an infused uh staff member that's currently tweeting out updates for that match that's infused dinge he is the coach of the team that flew out here all the way from the europeville and he's given us some updates on that matchup so if you want to go ahead and check him out that's the best way to do that here i'm sure the cod world league twitter will of course tweet that out that's a definitely a big game there but more so into this matchup as we're getting into the score streak uh the uh, score streak section Players are going to be switching over from what we had in Uplink. I believe the HCXD was still... Was the HCXD banned in Uplink? I, I think it was. I think that was the last one. I have seen people commenting on the amount of times the HCXD has been taken out of games without the gaming. And it was it was banned in the CTF the here, but I'm trying to remember if it was banned so, on the Uplink as well. Not 100% sure on that one. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say, as players are editing their score streaks, there were like two, maybe three Cerberus on the side of Optic Gaming in that last. You can't let things snowball out of control once again. If oh you God, that is zero because the combined streaks that we saw on the side of Optic Gaming were absolutely ridiculous. Right? Yeah, man. Stumps on a nine streak at one point. Crim six, I believe, seven, eight formals on five streaks left and right. Karma it's picking up a lot of high impact kills and going on streaks as well. Yeah, Optic was bullying them on that map. We're gonna have to send them to a seminar or something, man. Shout out to Cloud9. But looking at this matchup here, Fringe, uh, uh, Fringe CTF. I gave this map to Optic Gaming. I think this is where they close out the series. But like I've said, we have seen some highlight rewarding worthy play from the likes of Sender and Diabolic on this map. I think Diabolic's made the top five plays once or twice, and Sender, I don't think he has, but he's had some very explosive plays around the train area. So let's see what the opening push looks like as three players from Optic Gaming go straight through trains. They're going to meet a lone Sender. He's shut down by an AR. Diabolic, though, there for the trade, but he's still cornered, and it doesn't matter. Diabolic shuts down both Karma and Scump. He's worked his way all the way into the back, and I was going to mention there's about three players in the lobby right now that don't have blast suppressor 
on as well. So we're going to have to pay attention to that throughout the game to see what the positioning is going for them. But Kill will be the first one to touch a flag and trying to get away here. But he has a player coming in for the pinch. That's going to be formal cleaning it up. Two in a row so far. They able to shut down Chino Three as well. Piece. Make that three. Three piece to clear the base. Farm formal has yet to die in this game. Karma currently 0-3, not able to get too much going off within the first minute. But Formal is still alive and making up for a lot of those mistakes or a lot of those misfortunes oh. if they weren't mistakes. He also has access to the Dark Crim, finds two kills on Killa and Chino. But again, Diabolic is there with the sub game around Barney. He's just so dangerous. And that's something I mentioned in the pregame lobby. Diabolic Three kills. Again. Diabolic is just shutting down this zone. Diabolic has looked amazing for ground zero so far. And now Formal is fully streamed <laughs> out. Oh my God. Six. Please kill oh. this man. Right now we're going to stay on board with him. He has two players for ground zero going for the challenge. And finally, Chino is going to be the one to end the streak there. But the damage has already been done as far as utility is concerned. The score not reflecting that just yet. We still have less than three and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Chino looking to try and pick up a pick on Karma. Make that two going for ground zero. The next person they have to stop, it's Formal coming back up off the respawn. Him and Skump duo making it work. So far, there's two in a row. So you might remember what happened in the last 10 minutes when Optic Gaming got a Cerberus. Well, the first time they got a Cerberus. Sorry to confuse you there. Uh, it snowballed pretty heavily out of control and, and Optic Gaming just took right over and won 20 to 3 on the evac uplink. We're seeing Formal start the game 6 and 0, fully streaked out. So that allows Optic Gaming to make a few mistakes. It also allows them to capitalize a lot heavier on Ground Zero mistakes. We'll have to see just how they respond as they push through train here and they're swarming the enemy base. Two players are still down for Optic Gaming, so the pressure is on. He has to win that gunfight against Crimson. He's not able to do so. Killa, long range engagement against Formal's AR. Ah, not the best situation to be in, so he's going to lose and they're dead. All right, that's three in a row now for Optic Gaming. Four. And four. <laughs> so. Yeah, see that on the kill feed, Skump will go down. Crimson is going to try and pick that one up. There we go. Diabolic and Cinder are both down. Numbers advantage was in favor of Optic Gaming as Ground Zero were forced to come through the back alley. And just like that, they keep control of their base. This is looking just like the first half of that uplink on EVAC. The both of these teams sort of responding to the other's advances. Krim able to take down Diabolic Chino though on the middle of the map is going to shut down Skump and present any mid-map movement from him. He's well on his way to the site. That should be in here within the next minute or so. Probably much, much shorter than that because it looks like he has a kill in his sights. Shuts Karma down. That's going to be a headshot. And he sees Skump in the back of his base here. But I think he realizes that Optic is spawning up and doesn't want to get too close to that truck. Skump. Ooh, nice shot like there as soon as Gino. I try and switch on to him. Gino's AR is so nice, man. Cinder's going to try and get away. He's shut down. Diabolic's going to keep the flag route going, though. And you see two players going to go on the chase. Karma's taken out. Tempest comes out as well. That was going to be in the hands of Crimsix, but damage has now been done. Ground Zero take the early lead. Crimsix, though, still a force to be reckoned with with this Tempest. Now, it's about one player around the fence. He's going to focus inside of Barn where he's able to take up dive off. Ground Zero able to open it up with a flag cap oh now. My. Crim's going to pull the flag, turn on a player with the Tempest. Still, though, traded by Senders, Elkar 9, catching him off guard. Chino in position with the M8. Keep in mind, High Caliber is in this game, and he is running it. That extra damage will make a difference throughout the next five or so minutes of this game. Skump still hovering around Barn. His biggest threat might be Diabolic. Actually, where is Diabolic? There we go. There's Diabolic. I knew he'd be around Barn. However, Krim is going to get the better of him. There are two players alive for Optic Gaming right now that have special abilities. That's Formal and Karma. I think we hear a Scythe out. Is that Formal Scythe? No, it is not. Formal still fully streaked out. Let's make that two in a row for him. Krim 6 going to be the flag carrier here. And that's we talk about high impact kills all the time. Skump picking up that kill on Diabolic. That's a cap. The flag cap for Optic Gaming. Look at the position from Karma. Worked his way into Barn. Comes up behind. Picks up one. The flag going to be coming out once again. Tries to use a heat wave to secure the second one. Formal follows it up. And now the flag is going again. Diabolic, the only one that can stop this for ground zero. He wave. He wave picks oh, up one half to pick it. up both of them. <gasps> not able what? to do it. Crim6 will be able to run this flag home. And just like that, Optic Gaming have a 2-1 lead going into the half. That was huge. It, did, did the heat wave hit the second player? Or did it just affect him less than the one in front I'm of him? I could not quite sure. see. No, because there's the no drop off to how much heat wave affects you unless you're on the very, very end of it. If I'm, I'm, I could be mistaken on that one. But I thought for sure that heat wave hit both. But yeah, he wasn't even able to get both kills and return the flag. Went right next to it. And it looks like Optic's going to get their second flag cap in. We're going into our second half with the score up 2-1. 
Optic still has formal fully streaked out, and I think he still has access to a specialist weapon. That he does scump as well, has access to what looks like psychosis, and nothing. There's no utility on the end of ground zero. See if anyone at least has streaks or anything like that. I don't think we missed that though. No. Nope. Yeah, nothing. No one has streaks on the side of ground zero. Now, let's see. Formal has pulled out the site. Spots one, defenses. Cleans that one up. There's three quick down in favor of Optic Gaming. And you see immediately as soon as that happens, smart play by Cinder. All he has to do is rotate back to servers. Oh, Will God. Come out. The push is on the way. They're going to play this a little bit slow. And I like this play. You have the servers coming down on the map. You don't have to push just yet. You to see. Looks like some more streaks will be used. Formal's going to be able to spot two. Not able to clean up either of them. Karma, though, is in a perfect position to find this player and take him out. And just Here like it comes, that, guys. be able to get away with the flag. This is where it comes. The relay is on pace. The Cerberus is in ground zero's base, and Karma is more than halfway back to his base with the flag. Optic Gaming still set up for a spawn trap. Formal finds two kills. This is looking really scary for the Ground Zero fans out there. This might just be the end of the series. EMP's coming through. He destroyed the Cerberus as well as several clones. Scumpy special stability not affecting him too much there, but he's still alive to get a kill. Setting up Crimsix for some Tempest plays here as well, and he's on pace for a Cerberus. This is looking just like that uplink. Kill it is in a place, though, and looks like they might know that he's in dub. Yep, some more streaks being used, and there's another Tempest. On the side of Crimsix, gets it down with a gun Please, as well. Please, have mercy. And now he will be in control of the ground zero flag. You see Karma picks up. What are the spawns going to look like here? And won't be able to get yeah. away. There are too Split many spawns. players there. Yep. And that sort of stops the flag run. But Optic Gaming with a two flag lead. Formo is just flying this dart around the map. Picking up kill after kill. That was a little bit of a wasted opportunity. I mean, don't get me wrong. Optic Gaming is very far like ahead in this game when they're playing great. But that was a bit of a wasted opportunity with how close Krim was to, I think, another. What, it could have been another Cerberus or he was doubling up. Couldn't tell. But uh, pulling that flag, they split the spawn. So people, one teammate was at Peaches, but so was an enemy. And then another player spawned silos and he ran down mid-map. So it's just a pretty simple kill there. But regardless, another flag pull opportunity is well on its way because of these score streaks. And Krim is right there for it. 450 points away from doubling up on the Lightning Strike and Hellstorm. And no one from Ground Ground zero is in is in uh, is in range to stop this. Krim's gonna put this one away. That's four flags for OG, and the fans surrounding their booth are real excited about it. Formal, this could be the end of the series. Formal and Karma are also in great positions there for the cuts. Now he's gonna stop that ball for a second. That's all he needs, right? The player is right around the corner. The pinch is going to come in from ground zero. That ball like, picks up one. The other one taken out. So he's the only one here that can do something for them. He's taken out, and he's gonna follow that up with one, but. Has to win this engagement here. In fact, his teammates spawn up on him as well as he's able to clean up the kill. The scump flag still going nowhere. Optic Gaming take control of their base once again. You gotta wonder where the ARs are at for Ground Zero right now. The subs are doing fine, or at least Diabolic is doing fine for the team in terms of their sub play. He's keeping as much control and as he can on Barn and, and trying to pressure it as much as he can, but. It's just that you need more than that, obviously. And Optic Gaming is showing that they have that and more. And it's just, it's real, it's real difficult for Ground Zero to come out on top here with only a fraction of the team contributing. And with players like Formal and Krim just doing whatever they want on the map at the moment. Krim 6 on a five streak, and now the Tempest comes back into play. He has a Hellstorm at his disposal as well. Now he knows where these players are, only able to pick up one. The chain doesn't go quite that far as Karma and Form will now put some pressure on Ground Zero. Continue pressure over here around Globe. Karma ends up falling. Form will now next in line. He's able to make this easy kill, but two more are there. Ground Zero looks like they're trying to work their way back towards the middle of the map. Kills though not going in their favor. Kill it now is just going to be waiting for Scum to push, and he just backs up and regroups with his team. Less than a minute remaining now. Yeah, this one's looking like it's over. A minute left in the game. Three flags down. Optic Gaming just pouring it on here and not letting it up. Crim6 is double positive. Formal might as well be. Plenty of score streaks that came through on their side, and Ground Zero has very little to work with. And just a reminder here throughout this match, High Caliber made it through, and Center and Chino are running it. Formal and Karma aren't, and the subs aren't having any problems in the map. Man, and I'm thinking, did we see Killer use the Vision Pulse even once this game? Like. I don't know. I've been too focused on his, his radical, just, you, you know, think, decimating whatever's in front of it. You think he doesn't really have many opportunities to use that effectively so far, the way this map went? I mean, the first half, once again, very good stuff Not from Ground Zero. Yeah. 
but the second half, Optic Gaming sort of push the on button again and show up. Yeah. 4-1, the 3-1 series. Optic Gaming moving on to face the winner of Rise Nation and Team Envious. Yeah, these last two maps were not indicative of how the first two went at all. Optic Gaming really came to life and just shut it down and showed that Dream Ground Zero, I that's the last time. That's the last time I'm saying Dream Team. I don't care. That's, the, that's it. Uh, Opti Gaming shut it down in ground zero. Just didn't have a chance in these last few maps. Wow. So what do you think ground zero has to do going forward if they want to find themselves working their way into possibly the grand final, you know, like loser semis, loser's quarters? What do they have to do going forward here? Remain consistent throughout the series. Sender and Chino were doing pretty big things to keep them in that hard point. They lost it, of course, but it was still a good performance. Search and Destroy, of course, we just saw great team play all around. Awesome coordination, but in the uplink and the CTF, they just weren't winning their gunfights. They were getting heavily outslayed. And I don't know if maybe just banning the M8 is what they need, but I think that that might have been helpful in the series for them because formal and, let's see. No, actually, okay, so in the uplink, it was most of the subs, wasn't it? It was Crim and, Car Crim and Skunk. And then we saw that again in the, in the CTF. So. Maybe target some of the weapons in the band and protect. Well, looks like that was our last matchup here on the Bravo stream. Thank you for joining us. Today, we'll be back championship Sunday tomorrow. And looks like on the other side, some great matches still happening here in Orlando. I believe we have primetime matchups coming up after this.